the king's kid, yes I'm the king's kid. My father is the king over everything, so I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe. I'm the king's kid, yes I'm the king's kid. My father is the king over everything, so I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe. So I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe. Uh, g'day there King's Kids. Uh, great to have you all here again, members of God's royal family. Uh, I'm Arnie from Arnie's Shack. Uh, we are going to be looking at a Bible story today which comes from Luke chapter 2. Uh, it's about when a boy went missing and, well, I won't tell you what happens now. Uh, you will just have to keep watching. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with it. And today, I'm going to show you something amazing. My assistant Hans and I just love doing experiments. Today, we're going to show you how to use a whiteboard marker to make an animated drawing. This is going to be a really fun experiment. Now Hans, are you ready to start? Hans, are you there? Oh, there you are, Hans. I was getting worried you weren't coming today for this fun experiment. I am glad you are here. Are you ready to start? Okay, let's go then! Now Hans, first thing we need is a whiteboard marker. Yes, that's right. Now we need a glass bowl. Very good Hans, that will do nicely. The next thing we need is a cup of water. No, no, Hans, not a cup and saucer, a cup of water. Yes, thank you, Hans, much better. Now we need a piece of white paper. What do you have there, Hans? Is that a roll of toilet paper? Well, I suppose, yes, if you break a piece off, that is a sheet of paper. But I should have said what I need is a piece of A4 white paper. Yes, much better. Thank you, Hans. Now I think we are ready to begin. First of all, can you please place the piece of paper under the bowl? The reason it is under the bowl is that it will make it much easier for us to see what is happening in the experiment. 
Thank you, Hans. Now, can you please use the whiteboard marker to draw something on the bottom of the inside of the glass bowl? Just some squiggly lines will do. Yes, that's right. Now let's let it dry for a moment. Next, gently pour water into the glass bowl. But make sure you tilt the bowl so that the water is not getting near where you've drawn. Yes, that's right. Now, very carefully, tilt the bowl back so that the water will slowly trickle back towards where the writing is. As you do, you will notice that the writing starts to float. Look at that! Isn't it amazing? The writing that was on the bottom of the bowl is actually floating on the surface of the water. Give the bowl a gentle shake. Can you see that? The writing is actually moving. Isn't it amazing? Now that we have established that this experiment works, let's try again. But let's try drawing some people and see if we can get it to work for them. Hans, can you please go and dry the bowl so we can do the experiment again? I will meet you back here later. Hi there, King's Kids. It's Stephen here again, and it's time for another story from the Bible. Every year, Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, would travel from Nazareth, where they lived, to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. It was a big trip, and they always had to camp along the way. Jesus had just turned 12. So, for the first time, he was going to travel to Jerusalem with his parents. Lots of families travelled together, so it was a really fun time. The kids got to spend time with each other. The parents also had the chance to walk and talk with their friends. In Jerusalem, they all enjoyed the festival of the Passover. What a wonderful time they had worshipping in the temple. Too soon, it was time to return home. There were crowds of people everywhere. The group, who had come from Nazareth, where Jesus and his family lived, packed up and began the long journey home. The parents once again enjoyed walking and talking with their friends. The kids had great fun spending time together. Finally, after a long day of walking, it was time to camp for the night. Mary and Joseph began to set up their campsite but they could not see Jesus. Usually he was always there ready to help them. Puzzled, they began to go to the other campsites to see if anyone knew where Jesus was. No one had seen Jesus. In fact, no one had seen him all day. Mary and Joseph were very worried. Was Jesus still in Jerusalem? Had they really left him behind? It was too late and too dark to travel now. So very, very early the next morning, as soon as it was light enough to travel, Mary and Joseph headed back to Jerusalem. On arriving in Jerusalem, Mary and Joseph searched the place that they had been staying. The markets, the city streets, the temple, but they could not find Jesus. They were so worried, they kept praying that he would be safe. After three days of searching, as they walked through the temple courts, they saw a group of teachers. And there sitting amongst the teachers was Jesus. The teachers were all listening to Jesus and asking him questions. The teachers were amazed at Jesus' understanding and his answers. Mary and Joseph were so relieved to see Jesus, Mary rushed up to him and said, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Jesus replied, Why were you searching for me? He asked, Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Jesus knew that he had an important job to do for God, but he also loved and wanted to obey his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph. Jesus returned with them to Nazareth. You know, God also has an important job for us to do, King's kids. 
Why don't you ask God what you can do to serve him today? Anyway, kids, take care and we'll see you all next time. Today's Bible verse comes from Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Orlando. Today we're going to show you how to make your own old shoe planter. The things that we'll need are old shoes and um, some dirt and some plants or seeds. First you got to take your old shoelaces out so you have more room for the dirt. Now you have to put some dirt in the old shoes. Make sure you put the dirt right down to the toes. Now choose your plant and carefully put it in. Firmly pat the dirt down around to the plant. Go outside and give them a little bit of water and sunshine. An old shoe is a strange place for a plant to grow. Yes it is, but it's a good reminder that we can grow and serve Jesus wherever we are. Why don't you make your own old shoe planter at home? Bye. Bye! Hi everyone, my name is Nurse Betty. One of the things I love to do is to teach boys and girls how to stay healthy. Today, I'd like to talk to you about hand health. God has given us hands so that we can help, care for and serve other people. This is a wonderful thing, but if we don't take care of our hands, we might pass on something that will do more harm than good. To make sure that this doesn't happen, here are four things we can do. One, wash our hands properly using enough soap to cover all surfaces of your hands and wrists. Lather and rub your hands together briskly for at least 20 seconds. 
Pay attention to your fingernails. Rinse your hands under fresh running water and then dry with a clean towel or in the air. Two, keep our fingernails clean and neat. Dirt and dead skin easily gets caught under our fingernails. To stop germs from growing here, make sure you regularly trim your nails and use a nail brush or cleaner to gently clean out under your nails. Three, treat cuts and scratches. Cuts, scratches and insect bites can become infected if they are not cleaned and treated. Try not to scratch at injuries on your hands and keep them covered until they heal. 4. Keep our hands out of and away from our mouths and noses. Our mouths and noses can transfer many germs to our hands. Sneeze into your elbow rather than your hands. Avoid picking your nose or chewing your fingernails. We have a great opportunity to use our hands to help others and serve God wherever we are. So let's make sure that we keep them clean and healthy. King's Kids, remember that Jesus loves you. Take care of your body and take care of each other. like we are ready to do our experiment. Do we have everything ready? Let's just check. We need whiteboard markers. Yes, that's right. A bowl, of course, which you have ready. And our cup of water. What's that, Hans? You need to get the water. Okay, thank you, Hans. Now, please draw some stick figure people on the inside of the bottom of the glass bowl. Now let it dry for a moment. Yes, that's right. Now tilt the bowl and gently pour the water into the bowl, making sure it's away from the drawings. Yes, that's right. Very good, Hans. Now tilt the bowl back and let the water slowly trickle under the drawing so it begins to float. That's very good, Hans.
Look at the people floating in the bowl! Don't they look great? Now, Hans, gently swirl the water around the bowl and watch them move! Doesn't it look wonderful? The reason this experiment works is because the marker leaves behind a mixture of pigments and a type of alcohol mixed together. The alcohol evaporates and the pigments are left behind as a solid. Glass is so smooth that the solid slides right off when it gets wet. So our little people float on top of the water. Look at them dancing around. They look like happy little characters. In today's story, we learnt about when Jesus was a boy and he would cheerfully serve those around him. It's nice to be around people who are cheerful and happy. Look at those happy little characters in the bowl. Are you happy and cheerful to be around King's kids? I hope you are. Anyway, thank you for cheerfully helping me with today's experiment, Hans. And thank you for joining us, King's kids. I will see you all next time. I sure am, Shane. And do you know who else is logged in? Who's that? We have King's Kid Mile logged in with us today. Hi, Mile. Hi, Shane. Hi, Andy. Hi, King's Kids. G'day there, Mile. It's good to have you here. Uh, how about we uh, pray before we start? Dear God, please guide us. Thank you. Hey, hey Andy, uh, what, where's the uh, text come from today? <laughs> well, Shane, today's text is found in Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. Mile, would you like to read your version first, please? Sure. And now, Israel, what is the Lord your God asking you to do? Have respect for him, live exactly as he wants you to live, love him, serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. That's a really cool text. Uh, what does your version say, Andy? Oh, well, my version says, Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Hmm, I'm going to read it from my grandma's Bible and see what it says. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Well, that's a bit longer, that one. Wow. Mile, do you have a question about this passage? Yeah. How do you do that? Hmm. When we give our hearts to uh, Jesus, Mile, do we just give 10%? Uh. No. Um, what about 40%? Huh? No. Well, what about 75%? Mm. No, what about 90? Nope. Mmm. So that means that when we give our heart to Jesus, we have to give 100%. Is that right? Yeah. And when we give 100%, that means that we live for Jesus all the time, constantly. What do you think, Andy? Oh, yeah. Well, I think that this passage means that we need to do things for God in everything we do. That might mean picking up a piece of paper to help keep things looking nice and neat and be friendly to someone or just smile at them. We just need to remember everything we do is for God. Wow, I've learned a lot from this text. Hey Andy, would you like to say a prayer before we go? I can do that. Dear God, thank you for your word. Help us to follow you. Amen. 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 We'll see you later, King's kids. See you, Mile. Bye. Seeds we plant them in the garden, water them and watch them grow. Add some rays of sunshine and some drops of rain, and then 
Designed to families, uh, where we can be loved and cared for as we grow. Uh, Mary and Joseph were Jesus' parents, and they loved and cared for him too. Uh, Jesus loved and obeyed his parents, uh, but Jesus also knew he had an important job to do for God. Uh, in our families, we too need to love and obey our parents, uh, to be happy, helpful and cheerful like Jesus was. And remember that God also has an important job for us to do too, kids, uh, because we can serve God wherever he puts us, King's Kids. Uh, anyway, King's Kids, it's time to go now. I will look forward to catching up with all of you again next time. Uh, so take care, stay safe, and God bless. Peace that passeth all understanding, joy that overflows. I'm a king's kid, yes I'm a king's kid My father is the king over everything So I will sing this song cause I know that I belong to the king of the universe I'm a king's kid, yes I'm a king's kid My father